The following documents and recordings are the fifth instalment in a compilation detailing the events the repair team sent to Outpost Freestead, consisting of Dr. Rosa Della Torre, Walter Heath, Graham Kasner, Dr. Karina Schumacher Weiss, and Jonas Thorninson. In the winter months, gale storms in Svalbard can reach speeds of 130 km per hour. Accompanied by or following snowfall, such storms can reduce visibility dramatically, more so in the winter months of the polar night. During these storms, travel is not advised. The White Vault Following the previous instalment, the assessment and repair team decide what the next step is as they watch over Dr. Schumacher Weiss and the ongoing storm. This first recording comes from the camcorder of Mr. Walter Heath. The video files have been corrupted, but the majority of the audio files are still operational. I'm staying here. I thought as much. We have to go back. We will stick together, no one wander off. I would like to see it again. It is fascinating. I would like it known that I disagree with returning to the site, but if Jonas, as the representative of Sija Group, wants to return, then I will take you back there. We should go back. Now, while I heard many concerned, ominous tones just then, I cannot be dissuaded. At least for today, since the storm is still here. When we can leave, we will leave. But for now, I've got this camcorder and a hopeful outlook on some monetary discovery payout that will land me a great flat and a movie deal. While I enjoy your optimism, please just follow Graham's orders and stay safe. I am not going to be there to patch up your wounds. We both will, Rosa. Absolutely. Don't worry a bit about us, Rosa. We'll be back before supper with new tales to tell. Are you both ready? Yes. Certainly. Rosa, close the door behind us. And... Please. Will do. You may want to conserve your battery power for the side, Walter. Ah, yes, you're right. I'll just switch it off. Dr. Della Torre wrote a brief update regarding Dr. Schumacher Weiss's condition early that morning. Patient Dr. Karina Schumacher Weiss, female, 30, approximately 61 kilos, 174 centimeters. Diagnosis concussion, currently unconscious, as well as a sprain to the left ankle and several light bruises. Blood pressure 90 over 60, oxat 95%, breath 11 breaths per minute, pulse 59 beats per minute, temperature 36.5 centigrade. Update. Karina has not awoken since her fall yesterday. She has now been asleep for approximately 21 hours. I have checked multiple times for any evidence of serious bruising, bleeding, or possible fractures but by all accounts, she seems to be asleep. Her vitals shifted within normal ranges throughout the night, but during visual checks, I know that she always appears to be in REM sleep, which fits with the limited change to her vitals, as I would usually assume more variation from someone transferring from NREM to REM sleep. I will continue to monitor her as the storm continues, though I worry for her. The next recording comes once again from the camcorder of Mr. Heath. And we are rolling. <laughs> Molly, you would never believe this. Not that you need to anymore. You will descend after me, Walter. <clears throat> yes, will do. Right. The main building? Uh, yes, if possible. Um, right, uh, so... Can you give me a summary of what you found yesterday in the smaller buildings? Me? Yeah, uh, we found some that are small, as though for one person. Others were larger, perhaps for a family. Those ones had multiple beds. There were cold stone stoves, and Kastner identified those small, slimy, boat-shaped objects as possible oil lamps. So, people seem to live down here. I wonder for how long. Be sure you have a firm grip before you descend. Check that your crampons are on correctly. Firm grip, right. Crampons, yep. Yeah. One, two, okay. Uh, yep, yeah. all ready. So, 
<laughs> what else did you find? There were normal items, like balls, plates, cutlery, made from local resources like stone and bone. And, uh, oh. and ivory. Walrus ivory. Ooh. Not too shabby? Yeah, that as well. And there were many skins from reindeer and sea mammals. Any, um, polar bear? Not that I saw. No, not that I could see either. Remember, we did not check every building. And now we reach the next step in our documentation. So, how do you recommend in getting in? Generally, when rocks are in the way, you, uh, move the rocks, so... That is going to take hours. An hour, perhaps. The stones look a manageable size, and if this structure is anything like the others, there will be no door. Well, fuck. Let's move a few. Maybe then we can just glimpse inside? Either way, put down that camera and start hauling rock. Please be careful. Here there is a gap in the recording. Presumably as Mr. Heath set about removing stones. While the next documentation to appear in sequence is a follow-up recording on the same camcorder, I see it as pertinent to insert a section of Mr. Heath's personal journal entry now to help better understand the situation moving forward. Here are several parts of Mr. Heath's entry, edited for better contextual understanding. It took us over an hour to move the stones out of the way to make even a small entrance into the building safe enough to pass through. Each stone easily weighed a minimum of two and a half stone, and yes, I do see the humour in that. After moving the first few stones out of the way, we found the empty door frame and slowly worked to open a passable corridor of perhaps half a metre wide and two metres tall. It would not have been such an arduous task if removing one stone had not at times sent others tumbling down into the space we had just spent time freeing. Regardless, we made it into the primary structure. And Molly is not getting a penny of the money I make off this find. It is some kind of theatre, or church, or stadium the like. The structure is octagonal, and there are rows upon rows of rising, standing spaces all pointed to this small stage in the middle. The centre isn't even larger than my flat's kitchen, but there is a table there made completely of stone. Everything is. Well, perhaps the structural parts. There's not a single splinter of wood to be seen. The table, the rising stands, the rows, all of it, the same grey, polished stone. There was either no roof to begin with, or the roof fell in. Either way, the theatre is maybe three or four storeys tall, and the whole place was washed with that blue light from the glacier above. There are some decorative items that are not stone, and of course, some that are. Kasna identified the slim, curved poles that reached up to the missing ceiling as narwhal tusks. Never in my life have I seen a narwhal, but I know that their tusks are not usually three stories tall. Jonas was noticeably upset by the place, and he made no protest to return to the bunker. Kasna spent far too long examining the narwhal tusks, and I think he too knows that they are not of normal stature. At some points, they were thicker than my arm, and did I mention they were about three stories tall? In addition to the tusk pillars, there were points along the wall where stones had been carved to look like some type of animal, some form of arctic gargoyles. Some looked like people, bears, whales, walruses, narwhals, and a variety of other sea life. I've never seen carvings exactly like them, but it is certainly unsupportive of my much earlier Viking theory. When we finally walked in further, we stood in the middle of the stadium theatre church place. Where the table was, the ground beneath our feet felt shaky, like standing on loose gravel. Jonas bent down and came back up with a floor tile. More appropriately, a floor cube. The ground beneath the central table was comprised of hundreds of cubes slightly larger than a coffee mug. It was similar to putting together a floor made of Lego, but every piece is the same size and nothing actually connects. There was more of the structure beyond the table down the hall to the other side, but when I mentioned Rosa and Karina, we decided to head back for the day. With that explanation of the structure's interior, here is the audio file from their first entrance into the central building, taken from Mr. Heath's cancorder. It 
It's been about an hour, but we believe we have made an adequately sized and safe entrance into the main building in the middle of the town. Not done yet. Yeah, we don't need to move that stone. Put the camera down. Grab that end and we can get this done. Um, uh, like a stone stadium or, or maybe a theater. There's no roof. The roofs on the other building fell. They were made of skins and bone. Well, I don't see any skins that appear to have fallen or anything that looks like a structure. Just rows and rows of rising stone seats. Just come in, look. Move forward then. Oh, yes, right, sorry. Huh. That's all you can say. Huh. This is a massive find. I have never seen anything like this before. Seemingly no one has. At least not since the previous inhabitants. Look at those pillars. They look so well carved. What is that? If I were to make a guess, Narwhal does. But they don't grow this large. It's three stories tall. It can't be Narwhal. The porcelain color, the spiral growth, the only conclusion I can make is Narwhal. Though, as Jonas said, it's too long. Narwhal tusks grow up to three meters, not three stories. Yes, yes, I have your skepticism on tape. You can stop being such a killjoy. These carvings are exquisite, but they are certainly not Viking. One more theory disproved. Watch where you step, huh? And... Stay together. There's one pathway and little room to maneuver. I think we're okay. I wonder what the table is for. Hey, maybe it's like a church and this is some kind of altar? Like the ones they keep the wine and bread on? <laughs> Not a Catholic man, I take it. Is it so easy to tell? Does the modern world confuse you, Kazna? Would you like to leave this ice cave? Understood. How do you think Karina is faring? Better. Let's head back. We can always look again tomorrow. There doesn't seem to be much more here anyway. The floor is coming apart. Wait. Wow. That is perfectly smooth. They knew what they were doing. I think it's hollow. Can I see that for a moment? Are we heading back? For today, it seems. You are taking that with you? Why not? It's small, and we can use it as proof that we found something. Stones don't naturally occur as perfectly smooth cubes. I hope there's another can of soup. What's that? The soup we had last night. N no, I mean here, on the stone. Our line? Here, take the camera. Look here. I believe that's a seam. I can always stick my nail in it. You think it comes apart? Are we heading back? Yeah, just give me a moment. It is hollow. Maybe a box. I can't get it open. Try it when we get back. You're right. Yeah, my fingers are frozen. Here, give me the camera. The camcorder was shut down for the rest of the day. The following recordings were video files taken from Dr. Schumacher Weiss's personal phone. Dr. De La Torre utilized her patient's phone to aid her in documenting Dr. Schumacher Weiss's condition. Given the numerical names of the files, it appears several recordings have been deleted. I don't think Karina will mind me using her phone for this. This is Dr. Rosa De La Torre, currently recording on the phone of Dr. Karina Schumacher Weiss. Karina has been in an unconscious state for approximately 21 hours following a fall when out on an exploratory expedition outside the confines of the primary bunker here at Outpost Freestead. She's stable, see notes, and still appears to be in REM sleep. Patient has been asleep for approximately 22 hours now. No change since last update, except I saw her fingers twitch earlier. Otherwise, 
nodding. Patient has been asleep for approximately 24 hours now. Small jerks in movement can be normal for REM sleep. All stats fluctuating slightly within normal levels. Karina appears to be having some kind of nightmare. She began thrashing, 25 and a half hours, still asleep. Karina! I dropped the phone. Karina stopped. She is just asleep again. She was kicking out and clawing the air above her. She knocked off her sensor, but it appears everything has returned to its previous state. I don't know what caused it, but she has been... Karina? Pulse rising. Blood pressure. Karina! Karina! It's okay. You're awake. It's fine. Calm down. Karina, it's me, Rosa. It's just us. You're okay. Freestead, yes. How do you feel, Karina? Am I... am I safe? Your ankle is sprained, and you have a few noticeable bruises from the fall, but now that you are awake, I can conduct a few other tests. How, how long did I sleep? A little bit over 24 hours. Is everyone safe? Everyone is fine. You had some bad nightmares while you were asleep. I'm glad to see you awake, though, after your fall. Jump. We were... What was that? I did not fall. I, I jumped. Karina, what do you mean? You were several meters from the cave floor. You fell. I know you hit your head, so just rest. Are you hungry? No, Rosa. I know. I, I, I saw it. it. It was there. Lay back and I'll get you something to eat. Stay awake. I'll be right back. Karina, you can let go. I'll be back shortly. It was there, Rosa. We need to leave. It's in the village. Karina, you are very confused. The others are in the village. They'll be back later. They need to come back. It's there. What's there, Karina? It it came after me. It was abgemagert. So, so skinny. It was skinny? What else? Verschwommen. Karina, Karina, look at me. Can you tell me in English? It's blurry. Is your vision blurry? Karina, please follow the light with your eyes. I'm fine. My eyes are fine, thank you. It looks fine. What is blurry, Karina? Do you feel any discomfort? They shouldn't go to the village. It's there and it, it came after me. And it was skinny and blurry? And, and black. Oh, my ankle hurts. It's badly sprained. I wrapped it, but try not to move it too much. Rosa, I jumped. It was coming for me, and I leapt from the ledge. Just rest. I'll get you something to eat. Is that my phone? Oh, yes. Sorry. I used it to take notes on your condition. The following is from the station transmitter's built-in recorder following Mr. Kasner, Mr. Thorninson, and Mr. Heath's return to the primary bunker. Karina, so good to see you up and about again. I'm so glad you're all safe as well. What do you mean, Karina? You shouldn't go back down there. Don't go back into the village. There's something there. Uh, Karina, I'm sorry that... I'm sorry you're injured, but we've seen nothing down there that hasn't been dead or skinned for many years now. We are discovering something of great significance. We aren't going to turn away now. What did you see? It was blurry. Uh, Rosa said my memories may be a bit foggy around the jump, but it was skinny and black. There are no types of local wildlife that I would describe as skinny. Polar bears, walrus, reindeer, all rather large. I'm telling you plainly, don't go back down. Karina, please, calm down. Would anyone like coffee? Yes, please. Yes. Yes, thank you, Jonas. No, thank you. So what was in the middle building? It was a church or theater of some kind with a table and lots of places for people to stand. 
There were narwhal tusks reaching up three floors. That is not their usual size, no? No, it's not. So, perhaps a town hall of sorts? I hadn't considered that. What is that? The stone? We think it's a box. The floor of the building was made of them. Listen. There is something in there, and that seam goes all the way round. Do we have a screwdriver? Wait, yes. Right, I have a screwdriver. I'll be right back. I think we should leave for New Aelizund as soon as possible. We will. We have no reason to stay once the storm lifts. The transmitter is fixed, and we have collected enough documentation of the village to suffice. If the opportunity arises, we leave. Let us see what is in our box. Be careful. I don't need another patient. I assure you I can control a screwdriver. You know what? I changed my mind. Can I... Can I have some of that coffee, though? Yes, of course. <sighs> Thanks. Have a difficulty with the box, Walter? Perhaps we are wrong. It may not be a box at all. Yes, but isn't the curiosity overwhelming? <sighs> no. Okay, stop. Give me the screwdriver. Perhaps we can try again tomorrow. For now, there is a bottle of schnapps and some more aquavit I'm sure we can all enjoy. None for me, thank you. And I'll only be having a little, as I have to keep an eye on you. But a little is still some. Jonas, the glasses are behind you. Here, yes. Snaps, please. Why, though? Thank you. Good question. What question? Why is it even there? The village? I'm not sure. It is protected from most of the snow and wind down there. No, why is there a tunnel? How is it that Seiger Group loses a tunnel to an underground village? We have spoken on this previously. Perhaps it was just a cave unearthed by the university or another research team who utilizes this outpost during the summer months. Or Seiger wants the money. I don't see much value in it, but others certainly do, it seems. If we had found a cave leading to a vast deposit of rich mineral resources, I would be more likely to believe such an accusation. Even if most of it went to a museum or was made an active tourist site, city would still see minimum profits, as it would most likely transfer directly to Svalbard or Norwegian government. I am unsure, as I do not commonly work on Svalbard. Where do you usually work, Jonas? Home, in Iceland. Where times here, Norway, where's our projects coordinator overseas, across the world helping to plan international teams like ours now. So no other theories? The caves are rather intricate. Karina, how do you usually conduct a survey of a cave? Cave exploration is not a large part of my specialty, but the exploration and charging of caves has many beneficial outcomes, including increasing our general insight on the nature of groundwater streams and the processes soluble rocks such as limestone and gypsum undergo. The caves under the hatch, though, they do not appear to be the result of water erosion, neither from the subterranean source nor the glacier. If I were to classify them, I would say they are lava caves, but there's something wrong with the general formation. Surveying and mapping can take some time with more intricate caves. So if there are a recent find by a research team, it is possible they put off the process until a later and safer season. I'm glad to see your fall has not hurt your memory too much. More drink, anyone? The following is the remaining section of Mr. Heath's personal journal entry from earlier. After slight examination, we believe the stone we found is some kind of box. It has a small seam running around its entirety about three quarters of the way up, which was split well into a deep box and a thick lid. I tried to pry it open with a screwdriver to no avail. Perhaps I'll have a better idea tomorrow with the early aid of coffee. Additionally, and thankfully, when we arrived back at the bunker, Karina was awake. Rosa was the most relieved of any of us, as I think she thought the worst. Understandable, given that she would be the only one of us to understand what the worst could actually mean in such a situation. But she is awake now. What Karina is saying, though, is rather frightening. Rosa says she woke up screaming, saying there was something in the village, and that she jumped down that ledge to escape it. Rosa thinks she's confused from the fall and the impact to her head. 
Kasner cannot name an animal that matches Karina's vague description of skinny, black, and otherwise blurry, so that's comforting. I don't know if we will go back into the village tomorrow. We're all ready to leave this place for Neolison and civilization as soon as we can, but this storm is impossibly strong. I want to open that box, and I have an idea for those sound recordings. This concludes those documents relating to the day Dr. Schumacher Weiss awoke. No other documentation for this day has been located. This completes the fifth collection of information regarding the repair team at Outpost Freestead. The White Vault.